I count it as a distinct blessing that when I was growing up, my family prayed a rosary together every night. We would all gather in the room, kneel down, and pray a rosary. And even as a little kid, I learned all the mysteries of the rosary by heart, the joyful mysteries, the sorrowful mysteries, the glorious mysteries. And in the joyful mysteries, the first one, of course, was the Annunciation. And so in my child's brain, I could picture the angel Gabriel talking to Mary, saying she was going to be the mother of Jesus. The second joyful mystery is the Visitation. Mary visiting her cousin Elizabeth, the account that was just read in Luke's Gospel. And then, of course, the third joyful mystery is the birth of the Lord. And it goes on from there. But I always had great, a great image in my mind of the second mystery, the visitation. So once Mary found out that she was going to bear Jesus, be the mother of a child, and before the birth took place, she went to visit her cousin Elizabeth. Because the angel had also said, your cousin Elizabeth, in her old age, is also expecting a child. In fact, she's already in the sixth month. So I pictured Mary somehow going to see Elizabeth. Now I've learned as an adult that that was really quite a journey. It's uh, if Mary lived in Nazareth and Elizabeth and Zechariah lived in a, a village named Ayan, Ayan Karim, which is outside of Jerusalem, because Zechariah was one of the, the priests in the temple. He had to live nearby. It was probably about 90 miles. And most scholars say that it was not only 90 miles, but it was physically tough because you're going up hills. And it was also dangerous. So very likely, Mary would have traveled as part of a caravan. She wouldn't have gone, al gone alone. That was not in my child's image when I was a kid. But it's a wonderful story. And I think we have to look at it in several, let's call it layers, several layers. And the first layer is just a reminder that Mary, who finds out that she's about to give birth, does not worry about herself. She immediately thinks about her cousin. What a beautiful thing. She goes elsewhere. She looks into the needs of the people around her. That's food for thought. The second layer, though, is what happened once Mary and Elizabeth got together. Because these two women, difference in age, but they were probably spending a lot of time talking about the mystery that was unfolding in their lives. Because both of them were going to give birth, but under very unusual circumstances. We, we don't really know that much about Elizabeth's age, but we can sort of assume that she was beyond the normal childbearing years. So for her to be pregnant was a miracle in itself. And it was a great mystery. It, it unfolds with the angel talking to, to Zechariah in the temple. Very exciting time. For Mary, of course, we know the story that the angel had said that it would be the power of the Holy Spirit that would fill her with the child. So these two women must have spent some time in deep and heartfelt conversation trying to, to come to terms with that mystery that was unfolding in their lives. Could they understand it? Of course not. Can any of us really understanding understand the work of God? But we can dwell in it and we can contemplate it. And so these two layers, one is layer of charity and service and reaching out to somebody when Mary traveled to see Elizabeth. The other one is contemplation and reflection and meditation. Both of those are necessary in preparation to celebrate the birth of Jesus. Charity and reflection. But there's a third layer, and the third layer is the one I really want to dwell on. This mystery of the rosary is called the visitation. This is the visitation. But really, it's sort of just a, a type, a, a reflection of the real visitation. And the real visitation is God visiting his people. That's a phrase that's been used through the centuries, that God is not just out there and disinterested. God visits the world. God visits people. God makes himself known. And the ultimate visitation is God entering the world through the birth of Jesus. That is the great visitation. 
So Mary's visitation of her cousin, it really just kind of a reflection of that. But think about what happens in a, re, in a visitation when we visit someone. When I was a seminarian way back when, my first uh, summer, I was with a priest, and he wanted to give me something to do, and he made up a list of people in the parish that he thought needed a visit, a home visit. And he gave that list to me, and so I spent the whole summer visiting people. I, I found out I really enjo enjoyed that kind of thing. It was a, these were cold visits, cold calls. Nobody was expecting me. And sometimes they weren't home. Many times they were. Often I would go in the evening when there would be around. Some people would receive me quite well and invite me into their house. They would share all kinds of thoughts. Others did not want to receive me, and they perhaps never allowed me beyond the door. And I'm sure there were some that were home because I could hear them, but when I knocked on the door, suddenly they got very quiet. When you visit someone, you enter their world. But you only enter their world as, as far as they allow you ent to enter their world. If they don't allow it, it doesn't take place. If the great visitation is God entering our world, the question we have to ask, do we allow it? Do we allow Jesus to really enter our world? Do we make room for him and do we say, hey, we want you to be here and we want to tell you our story as you tell us your story. We want to sit down at table with you. And when I say we individually, yes, but we as humanity, are we really allowing the great visitation to take place? So today, when we reflect on the visitation of Mary to her cousin Elizabeth, and all of the, the beauty that we reflect on of how God's mystery is unfolding in our life, we know that God is still knocking on the door, trying to enter our homes for this visitation into our world.